welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for joining me this week. I'm really excited to see what the runes have to say for the week ahead. Now, of course, before we get into it, a little bit more about the astrological weather that we'll be dealing with this weekend and this week. <laughs> this weekend in particular, we're supposed to be having Saturn leaving retrograde in Aquarius, which is really, really exciting. That's going to be on Sunday. The reason why I say it's exciting because um, Saturn has been putting a lot of its energy and focus on our interior life. So Saturn is the planet of karma in a lot of perspectives. People think of it as karma. I like to think of Saturn as the planet of structure, the planet of time. Uh, it revolves around how we deal with the temporality of our internal environment, how we organize, how we restructure, how we look into our own topography of life and how we basically build it, which is kind of cool. So I always see Saturn as this really strong energy that helps us find the paths that we need to find in order to work towards our goals, right? Now, Saturn moving out of retrograde is going to put a lot of this energy and momentum forward. So all of the internal work that we've been doing, all of the preparations that we've been doing are pushing us forward into a new environment, a new experience. And it feels as if like the shackles that we have been feeling recently are going to be unfettered. So if you've been feeling a little bit heavy recently for the past few months, or been feeling a little contemplative, I would expect that over the weekend, that contemplative energy that has been a little bit heavy will feel much lighter or will feel lifted. Then we also have the sun moving into Scorpio and that's going to be on Monday. Um, Saturday, no, Sunday as well. <laughs> but on Monday evening, we're going to be having, I believe, the new moon in Scorpio. So we're beginning the new lunar month um, this upcoming Monday, Tuesday, which is going to be really fun. So Scorpio is the planet, uh, is the sign ruled by the planet Mars, but it is a sign that is connected to the depth of our emotional experience. It is the sign of transformation. It's the sign of spiritual awakening and enlightenment. So please be advised. It's going to be a really uh, empowering weekend, I would say. Um, and we're going to be feeling much more lighter by the end of Sunday into Monday. Now, for some of us, because we are heading towards eclipse season as well, which the eclipse season is going to be along the axis of Taurus and Scorpio, which is the axis of divine femininity or divine fixed femininity. So again, uh, the parts of our magnetic cells or the parts of our magnetism that are more fixed, less mutable, less cardinal, but more stable, right? So what I like about that is we're heading into this time period for the next month into November as we welcome in the new energy of tapping into our deeper emotional self. So allow yourself some fun, allow yourself playfulness. There's going to be a little bit of this kind of um, heavy brooding energy that might sneak up on us every so often as we move into Scorpio. Um, but it doesn't feel bad. A part of it is acknowledging and accepting our emotions as they come. So it's a lot, there's a lot in there. There's a lot in there. This week is going to be really cool when it comes to astrology. And please forgive my voice. I am a little bit sick. Mm. because such is the time of the year. <laughs> okay, mm. let's see what the winds have to say. of really tired <laughs> like really 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 tired and I don't get it necessarily in the physical sense but 
it could be physical for some of us. Again, it's a general reading, so take what resonates. But I feel like a lot of us who are watching this at this time are feeling very tired, both physically, emotionally, mentally, whatever resonates with you. And it feels like we're being called this week to allow ourselves some time to restore ourselves. Not just rest. I feel like rest is really a beautiful thing and a really beautiful concept. And it is very radical in this capitalist society that we live in. Um, especially considering that rest is a part of the, hmm, a part of our life. It's a part of the processes by which we're able to be creative, to produce, to um, create, right? Rest is required in that way. But this feels more like a necessary restoration period. And the difference for me between resting and restoring is rest is about allowing something, moments of stillness, so that it can put itself together in the ways that it needs to. Whereas restoration is a more active, conscientious awareness of filling your cup, of putting things back to where it was, of adding elements. Rest feels like letting things settle and letting things find their place, whereas restoration feels like adding things or removing things depending on what's needed. But it's kind of like um, like the difference between going to sleep and taking a shower. Taking a shower is very restorative. Going to sleep is also restorative to a certain degree as well. But the rest, it, it's more restful, in my opinion. But again, this is just trying to give you a distinction of the energy that I'm feeling. I'm seeing this image of polishing copper. So for some people, copper may be an element or metal that you work with often, whether you're a scientist or a metaphysicist or however you are, or whatever you are in terms of your job and things. Or if you tend to just carry um, copper bracelets that may be beneficial for you, uh, if that, if that, uh, if something that calls to you. But when it comes to this vision, I'm seeing copper being polished so that it'll be much more brilliant, it'll shine brighter. This weekend we're being called to restore ourselves. So if you need alone time, if you need time to um, take a sacred bath, or if you need time to um, go to spaces that you consider your, your hmm, holy ground, whatever that may be, right? Spaces where you feel that you could restore yourself. For some, I, I'm seeing like the museum or places of creative energy, things like this, right? It depends on everybody. Um, so moving, looking at the rune table and what we have here, I find it quite interesting because we have, the first rune is Isa. So Isa is the rune of ice. It's the rune of crystallization of allowing parts of us to become more stable and more solid and to expand through that process. Because of course, ice being one of the more beautiful elements in our environment, considering when water freezes and becomes a solid, it's one of the few things that as it uh, transitions its phase into a solid phase, it expands, which I really like. But ice here always for me represents a time of restoration, a time of rest, a time of uh, creating more hmm, non-permeable boundaries for yourself. So for example, if you're someone who requires alone time, really taking that time, shutting off the TV, shutting off the, you know, putting the phone on do not disturb, like these, these small actions that make that time for yourself impenetrable, right? And then I also see here we have Inguas, which is the rune of grounding and feeling more centered. The rune of the god Ing, the spirit of the earth. So a lot about this combination to me feels like grounding our energy. So over the weekend or into this weekend, we're going to be feeling much more inclined to have a little bit more alone time. We're going to feel inclined to find spaces where grounding is um, available to us. And of course, I do feel like this, this weekend will be a little bit busy. So it feels to me that give yourself the opportunity to say no to certain things. I know you may want to see people. I know you may have work to do or there may like be certain projects that you want to take on. But it feels to me 
as if it is time to be very conscientious of the energy that you have available to you, especially as we move forward towards Halloween or Samhain or Ihauna, which is the sacred Celtic day of the spiritual new year, which is really cool. Um, where the veil between this world and or the perceived veil between this world and the next is at its thinnest. Um, then we have Perthro here, which is the rune of the lock cup, the rune of intuition, feminine understanding. I often see this cognated in the tarot as the high priestess. So this weekend we're going to be privy to very interesting revelations, especially in our spiritual life. So I wouldn't be surprised if you will be receiving messages, whether those messages are going to be through your dreams, are going to be through your clear audience, your clear sentience, or what other, whatever of, whichever of the clairs that you have available to you. Um, and I think this is going to be coinciding with Saturn moving out of retrograde. It feels like a lot of the projects that you have on hold are going to suddenly start moving forward very quickly or the feelings that you have held on to in your heart that you haven't looked at for a long time are suddenly going to come out, they're going to overflow, it feels. And that energy is going to pour out of you. But it's going to reveal a lot about whatever certain situation that you may be in or you may be dealing with. I also see here, Rydal kind of fell off the room table, but I feel called to share it with you guys. Because Rydal, of course, it's tarot cognate being the chariot, in my opinion. Right over here, representing change, transition. So there may be um, a serious move for some of you going on over the weekend into next week. These moves may be physical, spiritual, or emotional. A physical move being um, signing a lease or signing a, a document in which you buy a house, whatever that may be. Um, a Or an example of a physical move as well being... Um, moving from one job to the next, things like this. The emotional movement is perhaps deepening a relationship or deepening a partnership or having a more awareness of your emotional life in ways that you hadn't before. And a spiritual movement for me would be perhaps a revelation or a received message or um, an unexpected circumstance or serendipity that places you in a space where you feel more energized or as if the stagnancy that you were feeling in that area of your life has now been pushed forward. So to wrap up this week's energy for us, it's a lot about grounding, centering, finding more time for ourselves in stillness and allowing these messages to come through, especially as we tap into the new energies and the new movement that is going to be happening towards the end of the week that being Monday, Tuesday energy. So I hope that resonates. If you like the video, please like and subscribe below. Thank you guys for joining me this week on the channel. That's all the runes have to say for this week ahead. And I'll see you guys next week, okay? Bye everyone.